Hello everyone, I have some news. Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord, is right here. Oh, uh, here we are. Trick. <laughs> I'm nice joined by Stan here. and Frank from Telworlds, who will be taking us through basically the demo that you've now practiced on the stage yes, and right, delivering yeah, yeah, yeah. to a very excited group of internet people. We're yes, the hype, the hype is very much real yeah, right now. Um, chat chat is, uh, is, getting, is getting seriously into it, so uh, we can't wait. And um, uh, it's just exciting because it's like live gameplay as well, so anything can happen at the same done time. This before. Uh, on our stage downstairs, right? Like, no, this is like this is the biggest chunk of live gameplay we've ever shown um, to the public. We did like press things last year, but this is like public, uh, live gameplay from the new game. So it's yeah. uh, super exciting. Yeah. And this is yeah, this is coming directly to you for the first time. Well, ish. Um, yeah. Forty minutes of gameplay of Mount. Yeah, forty minutes. And I'm gonna let you guys lead this one because I'm kind of excited because I played a lot of Mount Blade as well. So. Yep, Should we get to the, <laughs> let's just get into it. Let's let's see. Okay, brilliantly. Uh, so I mean. I get the feeling that most people watching right now know what Mountain Blade is. Yeah, but it might be worth going into. Just in case, yeah. uh, what it is, it's like a, it's like a medieval sandbox um, uh, sort of world, which like combines action, RPG, strategy, and simulation, right? So it's a, it's a strange and interesting mix of genres, but it comes together in, in sort of compelling, unique ways. It will interconnect and then will sort of show how that works through the demo, and also the improvements that we've made in, in Battle Lord itself. Um, Battle Lord, of course, is Mountain Blade 2, so it's like our, our first full follow-up to like the previous types in the series. Uh, it's a sequel, so it's set 200 years before the events of Warband. Uh, we want a bigger map, uh, bigger battles, and, and all sorts of just exciting uh, new features in the game as well. So let's just awesome. let's get started, right? Yeah, awesome. I like the, both the banner and the Lord. And the banner and the Lord, yeah, yeah of course. Good. We've, de we've delivered on both fronts <laughs> yeah, so exactly. far. We're right. Uh, we're done. <laughs> Got it straight away. Awesome. So what are you like? Okay, if we're on the world map straight away. Um, okay, so what, this is like a uh, save that we're loading in to sort of show you um, some of the, the, the sort of uh, later gameplay rather than what you start off. Normally you start off as like a sort of nobody in the world, right? And you just have to carve your own destiny and, and become um, you know, someone in the world. We're actually a lord right now. Oh wow. So we're like uh, a lord of the Batanian faction, which is like inspired by kind of Pictish, sort of Welsh, kind of um, a Celtic kind of uh, inspired faction we have, which is new to the game. Um, but before we get into the, the demo and talk about the game itself, we're actually gonna go and uh, customize our character, right? Yes, and let's do it. Find someone to play them. So I'm gonna take the reins here. So this is a oh, feature. Wow. And yeah, Stan's gonna talk us. Okay, sorry. This yeah, is a feature that we've, uh, we're very excited about uh, showing. Um, since uh, Mountain Blade is an RPG, uh, making your own character, customizing your appearance is very important and we spend a lot of time making our customizable options both detailed and realistic. So uh, we have, oh, if you go to the body type please, uh, we have two different sliders for changing our body type weight and build. We can also change skin color, we can switch between voices and of course you can play female or male. Um, and um, we have, of course, a bunch of hairs and beards. Uh, we can switch between our eyebrows, uh, yeah. teeth type as well. Um, yeah, and which shows us another feature which is new in Bangalore, uh, facial animations. Although this, this isn't uh, completely put into the game in all situations just, just yet, it's fully supported in the engine whenever we want to, so. Um, Another thing about the GUI is that we've designed it so that uh, it's made to get quick results. You can go into each part of the face and randomize, or you can randomize all on this part. So, um, we have prepared a few phases that we're excited to show. Um, you want to take over? Yes, uh, let's just go through. Just uh, uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm doing it. With okay, all right. This maybe some people would recognize. Um, and we have uh, this guy. And this guy, most people would recognize, I think. It's the it's the like the burlap sack pants that really make that one. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, uh, the face uh, customization tool is already very powerful, although this is a work in progress. And uh, we're very much looking forward to see what our creative players can do with this as well. And we're going to make uh, it very easy for players to share and save their creations uh, between each other. Awesome. Yes. It's a hell of a jawline. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, I also have this guy. 
I will finish once it started. And so because this is like, um, this is the generic system that we use all of our characters in the game, right? It's not just uh, the player character, all of the characters that we have in the game use this. So it's really important that we can sort of create this kind of diversity and have a, a really powerful tool that, that we can use to make interesting looking characters that the player sort of uh, interacts with and remembers. Um, and so that's, that's really been our goal with this, what we've been making yeah. as well. Another goal has also been making the en entire uh, workflow with this, uh, giving the player complete and full control. Uh, another slider will never move when you move uh, one slider. So uh, it's very easy to get into and, and, and be creative. And it's, it's, it's very important to let the player be full creative. So you presumably use this to create characters that you've, you've designed, but is the, is the randomization function also used to generate NPCs? Yeah, yeah, we also have, yeah, we can, like, have, have randomization. We can sort of have, like, um, make that specific as well. So like culturally, we'll get sort of um, people from different factions, we'll sort of look a different kind of way, um, have like different sort of, uh, you know, like specific sort of traits and features that you recognize from the different cultures as well. So yeah. that's like, it supports that. So, Alright then, so uh, let's pick a face and then Yeah, and which one again. do you want to play as? Um, let's go. I think, let's go with six. Oh, yeah? pretty good, yeah. Looking pretty good, okay. Alright, let's do this. Okay, so as we jump into the world map now, uh, what you can see here is, uh, it's, you know, it's similar to what we have in the previous games. It's a familiar kind of style of world map. Obviously, we've made it look much prettier, uh, we added a lot of detail. Um, if we zoom out a little bit, what we can see is uh, the names here. Obviously, the, the names of the different settlements and various locations in the game. And so when you're on the world map, you're still traveling between those, it's between battles and the various other interactions and, and, and gameplay aspects of the game. Uh, over on the west, what we have the uh, in red, it's the Valandian faction, and this is all these spiritual ancestors sort of Swadia and the Rodox. Right. They're actually enemies with us in this game, and so this, these are the faction that we're going to go over to, find one of their lords, and um, hopefully take them out in a big, big old battle. That's what we're yeah, going yeah. to work towards uh, through the demo and, and show at the end. Uh, so right now, let's jump back to our own character. Still the same thing with the previous games. We, we click on the world map just to move around. As we move, everyone else moves. It's like simultaneous movement, right? So it's uh, still, still very much Mountain Blade. Um, uh, I mentioned before that we're a lord in this faction. Um, we don't have a very lordly host right now, though. It's just four, four of us and our companions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a local town and we're going to um, bring a garrison that we have there back into our party and then go around as a large army uh, for, for, the, for the large fight itself. So let's head towards uh, Dunglanis, a very sort of Welsh-sounding name that yeah. we have for, for one of the, uh, the towns of Britannia. And so we showed off a little bit of, of our map before. We sort of we really tried to work hard on making it look prettier. Also present some information as well. So you can see like around these villages, you get uh, information about what they're producing. This is like a, a tanning uh, area as well. So it's producing leather hides, that kind of thing. If we just pause here as well. So we see that we have this small party of uh, seven troops. And what it is, is a bandit party, right? Mountain right. bandits. And what mountain bandits do, or any bandits, is they're bullies. So they're picking on our peasants and they're disrupting the flow of our economy. Um, so what we want to do they're is... They're chasing peasants there, right? No, these are, that's more bandits, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're infested right now. <laughs> and it's chasing all the bandits. Yeah, but we'll... Um, Let's get to a fight with these with these mountain bandits and, and try to take them out. We're actually slightly Still. outnumbered, but relying on Sten's ability here, yeah, uh, for us. Should, we should hopefully see us through. We're sort of pretty well equipped as well, so we have. Let's just jump straight into the fight. I think well, we could talk about uh, what we can see here a bit later on. And so we have like this. Uh, we have like a good two-handed sword. We have a horse. We have some, some decent gear, and uh, hopefully we can win this fight. <clears throat> so I mentioned already, it's like uh, action RPG strategy and simulation. And what we have in the battles is it's the action part of the game. It's still still the player skill is what counts. When you shoot an arrow, it's all it's all physically calculated. So if the arrow hits someone, that's what does damage. Nothing to do with your character. It's all still your your action gameplay, and that's what that's what's rewarded. This is lovely of the forest, by the way. Yeah, nice um, yeah. Of course, we have a lot of fighting our scenes now as well. So because it's like Batania, we have like loads of forests around here, and it's obviously reflected in the scenes when you jump the battle. We also have things like the, the spanning step and the, you know the deserts and the tundra in the north. Nice. Yeah, Absolutely uh, uh, <laughs> lobotomizing. Okay, and uh, so our companions are doing pretty well. Actually, actually, they've been taken out. Oh, oh my wow. god. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, I got it. Hold out. Okay, so we've got this yeah. big weapon, right? It's still, it's still the, uh, the mountain play combat. You have a lot of direct control over your swings and. and uh, oh, I like that your name is Phil. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's kind of. We, okay. Are we, are we won? No, this guy left. Okay, so we can take out our bow. Obviously, still our first and third person mounted his oh, combat. A great variety of weaponry as well. Hey. <laughs> he went full Boromir there. Um, okay, so brilliant work. We took it. We took him down. You can see we have our big two-handed sword right here. Uh, if we just show off how the combat's still working, the, the, the blocks and the attack directions the same way. 
uh, but we sort of deepened it and, and tried to make it a bit like harder to master at the same time. We've added lots of new animations, made it look smoother and, and more attractive as well. Uh, let's jump. Let's jump out of the battle then. Oh yeah, right. we've got a bit of information here. We, we can show this in the, in the large battle of the screens and, and the, the detail we get there. Let's grab the bandits, uh, prisoner. So fortunate enough to survive, but unfortunately not fortunate enough to avoid a life of slavery as when we set them <laughs> off. Uh, let's, let's, let's head on there and we can loot some of their gear as well. Rough fur armor, that looks pretty good. Let's, let's grab that, that's cool. Sweet. Okay, nice. All right, let's continue into the Glanis. Yeah, all right. Okay, so, uh, okay. So when you enter a city, uh, this is what you get. A menu of options. You can join the tournament directly or visit the tavern or go to the castle and speak to lords. Um, we've improved these screens from our previous games. Now you can see which people are in the city and you can also see information about the city, its garrison and uh, the population's morale. Now the reason we give all these options is because it's always up to the player uh, if she wants to explore or not. And we reward this in different ways in Bangor as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later. Uh, for now, we're going to pick up uh, our companion and the troops which we have garrisoned with him here. And he is in you the tavern. You can see he's in the tavern. Uh, yeah. from what now the taverns and uh, other parts of the city as well, um, the, we've worked a lot on creating atmosphere uh, and making uh, the world feel more alive uh, of Calradia. And the townspeople, companions, travelers, they're all coming into the tavern and drinking together. You can also sit with them. If you sit next to this guy, uh, he'll turn towards you and, and, and like hang out with you. <laughs> Um, there's also, since this is a Batanian town, um, you will see Batanian architecture, uh, people wear Batanian clothes, and they play Batanian music, and you can even play a Batanian uh, type board game, which we have, we have board games for all different uh, oh, wow. cultures. Six different board games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a way you can earn money. You can also you can also play with lords uh, while discussing politics. So we're gonna pick up uh, our companion uh, and our troops, and we're also gonna ask him to follow us uh, because we're gonna need him uh, in the town later. So this is sort of one of the ways that we're we're really. Um adding to the things that you can do in towns as well. So we've made the, the towns much more bigger and more interesting, but there's also much more gameplay there as well. There's much more right. things to do. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to show you, um, as we walk through a town, one of the ways in which you're, you can sort of uh, are rewarded for exploring around different areas. So as we head out of the tavern, we find ourselves in the center of, of this Batanian town of Dunglanis. And uh, what we can do before we, before we do anything else, actually, is we can ask him to run around and gather up all of our companions in the, in the town. So he does that, oh, well. he does that like um, live. He's going to go run and get them. They're going to start running so he's back. Actually, actually, one, one was just saying, <laughs> like a relay race. Yeah, exactly. And he's going to start heading around and picking up everyone else as well. Um, but while he's doing that, we can we can uh, walk around the town and uh, take a look at the marketplace as well. If you have a look, look up there, you can see the castle. So obviously that's where the Lord is. We can go up there, speak to him. The vertical it feels very different to the Yeah, well, we, you know, it's a brand new engine. Uh, so graphically, obviously, the, the graphic fidelity is vastly improved yeah. over the previous game. And, and you know, there's so much more detail and attention paid to the scenes. And, and you can really feel the, the culture with all of our immersive like different uh, features that we have. Like so much of the music and all of this like uh, great um, feeling of being in like a Batanian town that we have right now. Um, this is the marketplace, and obviously you can you can go there, to speak to the sellers, you can buy and sell goods, uh, of course yourself. Um, these sellers are sort of they are they're like the town sellers, right? So the profits that they make, a cut of those goes to the local lord. Mm -hmm. We also have a private enterprise. I'm going to sort of talk a bit about that in a second as well. So that's like a new feature in the game. Is, now, it, is, every, is everyone with us? Yeah, they're all here. All right, guys. Okay, so we, we, we're ready to show another new feature, we, which we're very excited about uh, as well. Highly player requested. It's uh, it's crime. Yes. Oh, awesome. So uh, let's, let's sort of see how this works again. You want to try yeah. to mess them up? I'm going to take over. All right. There's a lot of them. <laughs> so as you can see here, um, there's some thugs here that has taken over this part of the city. Mm -hmm. And um, basically what you can do is that you can um, you can mess them up and make sure that no crime is going on here. Let's provoke them, right? Yeah, let's provoke them. Let's uh, take this part of the town from them. Go. <laughs> nice. He didn't last long. Ah. Yeah, our companion's doing pretty well, actually, I think. Nice. Oh, sweet. Good job. <laughs> you really, really murdered those guys. Yeah, they did much better than against the mountain bandits. Yeah. So uh, now we can place one of our own companions here, um, since they're all still alive. Um, <laughs> 
uh, we couldn't do it in the last demo we did because the yeah, well, they were killed. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, and uh, that that will uh, stop uh, other thugs from coming and uh, creating crime. So okay. we're, we're sort of helping the economy to, to be stabilized in the city. What we also can do, which is completely new uh, as well, of course, uh, if we have a companion that has the trait of being sort of criminal, we can start our own criminal enterprise here oh, and wow. take money for ourselves. And since uh, we're part of this faction and we know this lord who, who uh, owns the city, that would cause a strain in our relationship if he would find out. So, but we don't care. About that, right? But if you're ultimately interested in like destabilizing a city, you could start crime yeah. there first. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to earn money, uh, it's, it's, uh, particularly early in the game. That's cool. Yeah, so now we got some uh, dudes here. <laughs> yeah, you these dudes are awesome, man. Okay, um, so now that we covered the sort of the, the, the illegitimate uh, business of the game, um, we, can, we can look a bit, bit more at the more legitimate side of things in, uh, in the private enterprise I mentioned before. So the shops that are inside buildings, these are privately owned and they can be owned by, they can of course be owned by the, the local lord, but they can be owned by another lord, right, or a merchant or a player. And so you can buy these and they're also really dependent on local supplies. It's blacksmith and what it's doing is it's getting a supply of, of iron ore from local villages, turning it into weapons and then selling them to, to caravans and the train around the map. So we have a really sort of fully simulated working economy and that's really important um, if you want to make a lot of money in the game. You want to set up some of these businesses and, and get, your, get your income flowing. Because of blacksmith of course what we have here, it's, it's crafting. This is a new feature. We, we, okay. we showed this a little bit last year but now we get to make a weapon uh, live. Um, what would you like us to make? And we can show you a few different options here. This, we have this full of like our melee weapons right now. This feature is lovely and it's so mounted bait as well because every part fits everywhere. Uh, we have different options we can randomize here and just nice. see different swords. Yeah. And the combinations we have is, is millions. Yeah, this, I mean this um, you know, blade and sword type presumably has a direct bearing on how those things play and what they're appropriate for. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I mean, we we can have any different kind of parts, so it's like blade, handle, uh, blade guard, handle and pommel for the swords. And so like, you can like, op any part fits with any different kind of part as well, so it's like fully customizable. And um, of course the different parts have their own physical properties, right? So we're making rather, a rather sort of very mountain blade-esque sandbox yeah. calculation when it comes to it. We can, right. we can sort of optimize things for reach, and we can sort of scale the blade up as well. We have like that kind of, that, that other control. Um, we can go <laughs> scale a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're gonna make a sword and we're gonna bring it into battle and kill some Vlandians. Yeah, yeah okay. So what kind of weapons should we make? Can we make like a, like a bastard sword? Like yeah, a two-handed yeah, two sword? Yeah. Uh, two-handed. Or like a, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. One Let's go two. for it. Yeah. And so you, yeah, you can go for like uh, reach, speed, or whatever, or, or you can just like you can try and balance things out to get like the, the best of both worlds. I think it would only be appropriate to set every single slide at the maximum. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Maximum okay. sword. Maximum, maximum sword. sword. But we can call it maximum sword as well. That's right, completely possible. It. Okay, let's max everything we have. <laughs> uh, we have one more left. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Wait, this guy. Uh, okay. So let's name it Maximum, Maximum, sword. Maximum sword, and then we can. Uh, we're obviously going to take this with us in the battle. We can use it to fight, and it's. Um, if you can type it out. <laughs> Turkish keyboard. Yes, of course. Okay. All right. Worth every penny. Worth every dinner. <laughs> yeah, worth every dinner. Um, we can also take a look at this as well in the inventory. We have like much more um, control. We can we can inspect items. Nice. Take a good look at things. It's all just like uh, we just thought about what the player needs and what the player wants from the UI and yeah. just try to do it. You know, we've really really improved on on, on warband and delegating that aspect. I think. All okay. right. Is this that's the sort of affected by the fact that we split everything to top? Yes, ab absolutely, okay. absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I and mean, so you can go for the one which you think looks nice, nicest, or you can you can really focus on the stats side of things as well. Right. It's, it's totally up to you. All right, so we have our party, we have our men, we have our, our maximum sword. And um, what we're going to do now is head towards the Vlandian, uh, Vlandian Empire, and we're going to find a lord on the border, and we're, gonna, we're just going to have a big fight with him. Great, sounds good. Of course it does. <laughs> this is like a staple of the game, right? Yeah. It's a huge battles. Uh, before we do that, we're going to speak to an allied lord, though, first. And, and uh, what we're going to do is get him to follow us, because we're, we're still a sort of reasonably uh, small party. We have like 60-odd people, so we have the, the appropriate name Gawig there. He's a real veteran of the faction, you can tell. He looks really happy. <laughs> yeah. He's showing off, perfectly showing off our facial asymmetry that yeah. we have in the game as well. Yeah, this yeah. is the total option we have that we added into the game. 
Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, um, one thing to mention here as well, you can see on the screen right now. So this dialogue option has the uh, the 100i factor. This is like a new currency we had in the game. It's called influence. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, it's like the power you have to to request things from other lords in your faction. So by doing things and uh, completing tasks in your faction, you know, following armies, fighting in battles, uh, you gain influence. And sort of by being a sort of uh, a high-ranking lord as well, you get influence gradually and it accumulates. And you can use this to do various things like get lords to follow you and. Um, uh, and sort of command, uh, it's, it's like an IOU, I suppose, right. really. Uh, and you, you earn that, and then you can spend it in a, in a sort of a direct way. So now he's following us on the map, where we go. Uh, they're happy to follow us for a couple of days, at least. Uh, but they will eventually say, like, you, we need you to do something before. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. And if they're, like, busy with something else as well, they'll just, like, probably reject it. Right. So we're going to find Lord uh, from another faction. And he would be here in the outskirts of the other faction, which we are at war at, Vlandia. We're going to try to uh, defeat him in a large battle. Okay, yeah. let's see how this goes. He's going to wait for daylight. All right. So this is uh, Ekerod, and um, he's a Vlandian lord. He's got a <laughs> great face. <laughs> and uh, he, he, you can see, because he's an enemy lord, he's already quite hostile. Um, but at the same time, um, we slightly outnumber him, so he's not actually going to try and directly engage us. We're going to have to deliver our terms to him, and we're the aggressor in this fight. So let's just uh, let's just provoke him. We don't care. Yield or fight. We will we'll force his hand and uh, get straight into his battle. So we saw that screen before, but uh, now it, now it sort of uh, uh, sort of comes into its full purpose a little bit more. We got we got information about both parties, uh, the total number of troops. And we can see which different parties are involved in the battle as well. So uh, when you have sort of a large battle with multiple parties involved, you want to see all the troops and all the kind of more, more information so you can make a better decision and plan out your strategy beforehand. Um, we give you that information now with our with you Okay. All right, so we into the battle. A little bit, so... Uh, so this is like... Uh, wait, that's... Don't... <laughs> Chris, let's see it. Let's go. Let's go. You good? Yeah. Okay, so um, obviously, you know, large battles, they're, they're, they're a staple of Mountain Blade, right? And obviously we have more troops than we've ever had in, in any game, uh, any of our games before. Uh, but in addition to that, we've really tried to make sure that they are um, interesting, um, you know, varied, and exciting every time as well. <laughs> so we've got our new armor there we're wearing. What's your what's your uh, what's your game plan here? All right, let's first Doesn't scout charge. a little bit and see what the other guys are doing. Our opponents, uh, you can see them, um, and. Um, the defensive player, Ekaran. So he's, of course, he wants the high ground, and he doesn't need to come further to us uh, because he is the defender and we're the attacker. So uh, I'm going to have to come to him if I want to battle him. So, so what we do is we know we've got, we've got much more advanced AI working here. They, they look for high ground, they hold that. Uh, they don't want to give it up easily, so it's going to be sort of on us to find a way of approaching and assaulting him um, uh, and this sort of difficult defensive position that he's, he's set up for himself. Uh, we have much more sort of detailed command options as well. We can we can sort of create formations by dragging them on the world map, uh, the, or the game map, sorry. Now we have some pretty decent troops as well. A little bit hanging, so our strength is really in our in our, in our longbowmen. But at the same time, we've got a, a good uh, core of cavalry. You can see Gowig there, along with the, the horseman front. Because he's following us, that, that makes us the commander of the battle yeah. this time. So, uh, in previous uh, playthroughs in the demo, uh, We've gone from the right, I'm gonna go from the left this time. Let's okay. try something new, I never, I never tried uh, another tactic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping uh, we will win. You can see Ekron as we move around, he's, he's sort of changing his formation. Right? He's changing yeah. to face us and make sure that he's ready for, for whatever we do. The first day I died, uh, but that actually <laughs> was great because it gave us the uh, opportunity to show off another feature which we have. The, the battle continues well, Let's hope we though, die again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The battle continues yeah, that's even probably, though... That's probably wrong. <laughs> If, if I would die, uh, my troops, since there are more of them, and if I give them uh, the um, like order of charging, then probably... Dude, you want, you're, you're going you're gonna to get shot in the... You are no, charging. No, no, well. okay, you you want to get back. What yeah, are you doing? I'm, I'm going to put all my men here. You see? Well, this is still mountain blade, so we're still completely uh, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, an arrow in the head is yes. an arrow in the head. No, right? we're not wearing a helmet right now, so this is... That's right. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's, there's no, still no fantasy, no, no, no exactly. tricks or, or special um, options for the player. You're, you're still very much in the fight, and it's still like every character has its own AI, uh, their own behavior, so you can fight one of them and they'll have a meaningful fight with you because they are, they're controlling their own blocks of attacks. Oh, we now we have much more develop, developed sort of like grand AI as well, so they're thinking much more tactically about what to do. 
you see the AI is uh, always responding to whatever I'm doing when I'm moving my troops, wherever I am. Um, they will change uh, dynamically uh, and, and see what I'm doing. So should we try and, let's try and bait him down off the hill, I think. Yeah, this is a good dip because if they want to run away later, then we'll have to run upward hill. So my I think we should send our archers, archers forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what we can try and do is if, if, he, if he spots that they're sort of too far away from the group, he'll recognize that and then and sort of go for a charge. That's, what, that's what we want. As a vulnerability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we want him to do. Yeah. You can see now he's, he's, moving, he's, moving, he's moving some horsemen over here. We're actually having a bit of an archer archer fight right now. His, his horsemen coming over to, to attack. Yeah, okay, so it looks like we've provoked them into a charge now. They're yeah, starting to come down. They're coming down the hill. <laughs> okay, pull oh. them back. Oh my god, no. Get out, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we've pretty much sacrificed our archers there. Let's get everyone else to charge in. What are you doing now? Yeah. And so, yeah, okay, our archers, we sort of, we, we pretty much used them uh, rather, rather awfully there, but uh, yes. at the same time, we're now going to ask to give us the opportunity to uh, fight Ekrand a bit off his hill. Um, can we see him with Ekrand? yeah, we can try to take him out. Oh, Where is he? There we go. There, there he is. Let's <laughs> try and track him down. Maximum sword. Maximum sword, yeah. Maximum sword because it's Maximum pain. So you see the fight is sort of broken out into a full, full chaos now. Yeah, he's um, actually gone to road straight to road and gone to the other side. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's out of there. There he is. There he is. Tactically passive, individually uh, suicidal. Way more impressive. Yeah, he's really... He's doing alright actually. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. just trying to take him down. Totally lost them, by the way. So we have, we have like interesting other AI um, uh, fixtures here as well. So like um, uh, the troops, if, if they are sort of they, they feel that they're being drawn too far away from their formation, they'll like run back into it and they'll feel like they need to self-preserve and right. kind of stay so alive. So they won't just break break up the formation for no reason. No, exactly. Uh, but obviously, if we send archers forward, they pretty much have to follow that that command. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they are all going to they, die. They were like lambs in the slaughter essentially. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing we're doing pretty okay. I think I think the the, the slight number of bonds we had and the, the troops that we had. Well, you kind of you spend your number of advantage. Yeah, we did. Well, I, I think we're, that's just about seeing us through. We have a two hundred sword as well, so the shield looks yeah. good. I think we're doing okay, yeah, are we? Uh, that arrow looks painful. Cool. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Where's he gone? Oh, the Lord. Ah, right, here he is. No, that's not him. No, no, Ekron might have been taken out. Actually, we can we can bring up the tactical screen and see exactly how things are going. Ekron is uh, still alive. Oh, this is still alive. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> obviously we have like a trans uh, uh, amount of improved physics as well in the game. You know, it's a brand new engine, so we can do much more interesting things. We have like um, like horses uh, will sort of like push you to one side, whether even if they're going to go over, you feel like the weight of, of various uh, sort of tactical um, approaches. So like it, like a big uh, heavy formation of infantry, they will be like essentially pushing the enemy forward as well. So you really feel like the weight of like um, you know, using these formations and using the Effectively, essentially. This is going really well. Yeah, it has yeah, gone really well. Was, I, think, I think our troops are missing. That was an amazing bait and switch, literally. Like, yeah. <laughs> I always thought spending your archers' lives simply to get a man off a hill wasn't worth it, but you proved me wrong. So. <laughs> we'll have to recruit some more, I think, later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, yes. So, obviously, our, our troops are now accelerating. And uh, we've got an arrow to the, to the elbow. <laughs> he, doesn't, he really doesn't look like he might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we get, we get some information we sort of brought up a second ago about the battle and what happened. We can see how many kills all of our different kind of troops has got, so we get more like detail here about, about uh, which of our troops are effective and, and, and we get more feedback about how the fight has gone. I think you lost as it done. See how I did. I, I killed two people. Oh yeah, they got knocked out. Gawig, Gawig, he took someone down. It's not bad. Good old Gawig. We did well. Like, that, that one trained infantry we killed 17 people. Our battalion footmen were very... No, that's just like, that's, that, that's, oh, all, that's, that's the old troop. Okay, that's, that's like a guy, long yeah. guy. Holy hell. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. So we um, can jump on. We can, of course, again now uh, we get to take him prisoner. Ekerin got away. Yeah. Um, but obviously, if we take him once again, we we can uh, we can use him, uh, ransom him, make some money, mm -hmm. and because we have like more interesting and detailed uh, like political mechanics in our game. So what we can do is we can take Ekerin and we can uh, not just ransom him, we can try and ransom him to a family member or something. We can we can try and make more money by by sort of using the, the, the politics that works within our game. And um, we can specifically do that and, and it will, the game will respond to it and give you an interesting result as well. Okay, fantastic. Nice, okay. <laughs> Alright, this is good I think. Yeah. Nice. That looks more safe. Yes, yeah. All right, brilliant. So uh, Ekron is defeated, and, and obviously this is going to help advance the Battalion War effort, right? Because now Ekron, 
Uh, he could potentially, um, he's feeling more pressure from his faction to, to do well because he's not he's not able to support our army anymore. So he might have to like really tax his peasants and uh, right. that's going to cause him problems later down the line because they might revolt and then he, he sort of, it's essentially, it's going to cause him problems if he wants to improve and advance in his faction. You know, if he's thinking of becoming like marshal or whatever, yeah. um, he's not going to be able to influence the other lords to do that if, if he's having to sort of rebuild his, his forces and, and uh, you know, drive his peasants to exhaustion. It's cool that his defeat doesn't simply mean, oh, you beat him. It's, it no, has a big course. impact on the simulation uh, as absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much more, more deep the way that everything is really interconnected in this game as well. I mean, you know, we could, we could go and uh, find his village and we can, if, if he doesn't stop us, of course, kill every single peasant that comes from his village to his town. And then and that's going to just really starve out his economy and really cause some problems. And you'll see that in his army as well. He'll have weaker troops, fewer troops, and, uh, and he'll just be put under much more pressure as a result of that as well. Okay, so that's, uh, that's everything we have to show for the, for the time being. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah, that, yeah it's, it's really interesting seeing how, how far the simulation has got. Because the game looks a lot better, but it's still familiarly Mountain Blade. It is, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. a fundamental level. But the most exciting changes to me, at least, maybe chat feels differently, seem to be taking place in how much that economic simulation... <laughs> <laughs> Chat's great. I, mean, I don't know what they Yeah, okay, cool. But like, how much the economic simulation is, is actually powering like the, the war effort, mm -hmm. the strategic side of it as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's really important. I mean, like, uh, and you sort of, um, you feel it as well in, in sort of, uh, in what happens with trade, because if you're, if you're sort of uh, too much in war, you're also missing out on a lot of trade as well. So you, you, like, you need to make sure that your, your faction is making good money, because that's how you, like, you know, the laws have the same constraints that the player do. And they have to pay the wages, they have to feed their army, and they have to do everything that the player does uh, in order to actually maintain a, a good, strong force. So everything else is really important. Um, you know, all the cogs of their economy are really important to be working for them. Given that, I mean, you, you showed, what you showed us is like mid-late game sort of status for the player. Is yeah, I mean, to say? Like, I would say it's like uh, mid-game very much. I mean, we have the, the first stage before you become like a vassal or, or a noble, right. and then you have like the noble stage, and then if you if you sort of really take it to town, or and you can start your own faction and become a king, obviously, of course, in this game as well. Is um, is the intent to kind of get players to that status a little bit quicker? Cause my, I mean, anecdotally, my experience in Mountain Blade is often that I spend a lot of time with that kind of early level, kind of like as a sort of very minor player. No, not that's I mean, bad, but no, like, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. well, the, the thing is. Like uh, you, you can just play it how you want to play it, right? You, you can start off and become a criminal, and you can you can sort of uh, take any sort of approach you want to sort of power and money to success. Um, but we have tried to engineer it in a way that you can, if you want to get to that stage, there's sort of there are, there are smarter and faster ways to get there as well. Um, one thing we have is like a main storyline now. And kind of one of the goals of this is, in addition to sort of building up the lore of the game and, and like telling the players more about the, the world of Kairadia that we've created, it's also to sort of um, introduce the, the players to the mechanics and sort of uh, drive forward some early early game progress if you want to go that route as well right. with, the, with the main storyline. So, like, you guys are at this stage, and it seems pretty advanced, like in terms of how how much of the game and the core gameplay of Mountain Blade you are able to show today. Like, what's next for you as developers, and kind of like what's next for the game generally? In terms of what we're going to be showing? Yep, showing, building, making, um, talking about. Right, uh, well, of course, Siege. You know, we're going to be coming with Siege uh, very, very soon. Um, we're, 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 doing, we're, we're, sure we're doing very, we're doing very exciting things, and yeah. it's super cool. I mean, we already we've talked a bit about it, and, and some of the pictures are in it, but um, we, you know, we can't wait to just show off a siege and, and, and have it look great and everything. You know? um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Given that uh, you know, chat has been very vocal about when they get to see Bannerlord, <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel like I have to ask, when are they going to get to see Bannerlord again? Hopefully, I mean, we're aiming to give it to the players in some shape or form this year. This year. Sometime this year we want to have it in player sounds. That's what we're shooting for. Okay. I mean it's not it's not a promise, but we that's what we really would love to do. Absolutely. Sort of hypothetically would you be putting it into player's hands early? Yeah, potentially. That's what we're thinking okay. about. I mean, right. we, we there will probably be some kind of testing at some point. Cool, great, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Can we just say? Um, of course, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, thank you to PC Game for having us. The event, it's been great. We've loved it. Uh, I, but we also want to say, um, you know, thank you to all the all the players and for your enthusiasm and stuff like that. We, yeah. you know, we're, we're excited to see your reaction as well. And uh, enthusiasm is always great for the game. We, we, we really do appreciate uh, all the support we have from our players. They're they're, they're, they're great. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously. Sure. Thanks to them. No, and very handsome, you know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. thanks to our players. Uh, I mean, the game uh, the game project started with only two people, and over the years it has grown into a larger company, and we're here now, and it's it's all thanks to the player base. So we, we just want to say really thank you all. Yeah. No, thank you guys for being patient and waiting for this to be on stream because you know I was really looking forward to seeing it too, but so glad to have you guys on and to oh, add this opportunity to, to like see the game for the for the first time. So yeah.
Then Frank, enjoy the rest of your show. I guess you're done now. You can go yes, on the show yes. floor and enjoy it. I think so. uh, I'm done as well now, which is nice. We're all done. Oh, brilliant. Actually, I'm not done. I've got to go down and do a Q and A, so I'm not done at all. But there, anyway, what are you going to do? But it's still nice. And if you tuned in for the live stream over the both days that we've been doing this, all the developers we've been talking to, and different games we've seen, thank you very much for watching. This was the PC Gamer Weekender, and I can't think of anything else to say. So, bye, and thanks for watching.